of the major radical right groups in Finland, I would first mention the the local chapter of the Nordisk Mutstandsrörelse, the Pohjoismainen Vastarinta League in Finland, and its subsequent follow-up organizations. This neo-Nazi organization probably uh, comprises something like 2,000 plus members and has been recently banned by the decision of the Supreme Court of Finland. So that will mean an end to their existence as an as an open organization able to to carry their symbols. But they will undoubtedly go on to to further incarnations and, and most probably will not cease their actions. Then we have the local chapter the chapter that that started it all in in several countries of the soldiers of odin which is a, a street vigilant organization with roots directly in in neo nazi movements in this country it's difficult to give an accurate estimate of its size but probably we're talking about a few hundred active members at the moment. Their fortunes have been sinking in later years and, and they are not at all as visible as, as they used to be. But there are important localities in the country where they are stronger than, than elsewhere. Then I would mention a very small organization, the Nationalist Alliance or Kansallismielisten Liittouma, as it's called in Finland. This is probably a very small organization. We might be speaking of something like 50, 50 plus members, even less active members. But this one has very recently gotten a lot of publicity here in Finland. And the reason is that that the the chairman of the organization is under investigation for attempted murder of a local uh, Finns party politician. You may have heard of this case, and I'm I'm willing to, if need be, further elaborate. As always, the the field of far right organizations is a very fractured one. There are a lot more very small, usually short-lived organizations that, that pop up and die. Of them, only one maybe is worth mentioning. The local, uh, uh, you might say that uh, it's a local chapter of the English Defense League, the Finnish Defense League, clearly modeled after the successful model of the English Defense League, but uh, seems to be rather dormant, actually. Uh, only the the chairman is, is some way visible. But apart from these far right and extremist groups, there is a very large mass organization and a successful political party. And with this, I mean the, the Finns party, which can be characterized as a, as a right radical movement. And this party is influential not only because of the fact that it's the second largest group in the parliament right now, but because it is also the single available channel for even the most far-right extremists to political power. As the party says itself, that they are a party unlike any other party, and, and that in that they are truly right. They have been able to channel the whole of, far, of the far right field uh, into their voters. Inside the party, there is still another organization which bears mention, the uh, Suomen Sisu, uh, which is difficult to translate. But <clears throat> This, by membership rate, this is probably not a terribly great organization, but the fact that it's almost entirely incorporated within the Finns party is significant. And several of the Finns party members of parliament are also members of Suomen Sisu. 
So Women Sisu can be characterized as a fascist organization if you look at what they speak and uh, uh, and write. They are undoubtedly that, and they are the main channel of the more extreme far right uh, kind of personalities into the party, into the ranks of the Finns party. is how are these groups influencing the political discussion in Finland? If we look at the the other far right organizations outside the Finns party, one might say that their influence is not too great. They do maintain their own publications, especially as in the case of the of the Nordisk Mustamsrörelse, but uh, their ability to uh, reach the the mainstream reader and influence opinion is limited at best. But the picture changes entirely when you when you look at the mass party, uh, like the Finns party, who are very active in social media, usually use it very very cleverly for their ends and have based basically the much of their political mobilization to the use of social media and through that they are also in a, able to to have an impact a great impact into public discussion and political discussion if we look at the connections of the Finnish far-right organizations to similar movements abroad, uh, I think one thing is salient immediately, and that is the, the strange ultranational character of the far-right. That means that the Finnish far-right largely takes its cues from discussion, far-right discussion and talking points elsewhere, and repeats them almost verbatim. So that the Finnish far right very largely says what the far right in Sweden says, and, and they say what the far right in, in the United States says. So this is really, uh, this is a, a striking feature. So for example, the Finnish far right have over the summer been very, very excited over the Black Lives Matter movement, which is, well, you might say that it's not a Finnish issue very much, but uh, they have, they have, spent great energy in lambasting the movement and trying to create uh, create an image of it as as simply uh, a cloak for for uh, for unrest on the streets uh, when we look at the real connections however some patterns do emerge Finland is in a geographical position which makes it close to Sweden for, foremost and also to Estonia where the the ECRE party a party very similar to to the Finns party has been able to also uh, make political gains but if if one would look at the the single most important successful um, model for the Finns party in later years, it has to be the Sverige Demokrater in, in Sweden. I can tell you a telling anecdote from the time of the last parliamentary elections in Sweden, where the, the, the expectations among the Finnish far right and the Finns party supporters were simply overblown, that the, a delegation of the party leadership came to Stockholm to celebrate what they thought would be the night of the revolution, when the Sverige Demokrater would gain a decisive electoral success and um, make the world into a different place than it had been. And well, as we know, the, the Sverige Demokrata made gains, but they, they were not impressive enough to, to change very much. And so the next day you could see the Finns supporters very crestfallen because of that, that the, the great victory that they had been expecting simply failed to materialize. And what actually was still an electoral success for the SD was described by them as, as a shortcoming and disappointment. This, this very much uh, describes their relationship, which has, however, cooled off in, in, in the last years. 
And there is another very important model for the Finns party, particularly, uh, and that's being the alternative for Deutschland in, in Germany. Probably because of, of simple linguistic issues, they, the ties between the parties cannot be described as, as very close. But, but it's clear that the, the, the Finns party has looked to the propaganda that, that the Alternative für Deutschland makes and, and very much uh, used this as a model for their, for their own. Then, of course, when we move further in, into the field of, of right-wing extremism, the connections uh, all across the national borders become more more important. Nowhere is this as clear as in the case of the Nordisch Mutstandsrelse, which is, of course, and, and uh, an organization supposedly spanning not just the Scandinavian countries, but also, also Finland. And they are characteristically the most uh, international of these movements and, and openly, openly say so as well. Of course, you, you can also mention the soldiers of Odin in this, uh, uh, this uh, connection as they started their organization as an international franchise group that supposedly had local chapters in, in several other countries, most of which probably are no longer in, in existence, but uh, it was clearly an attempt to create a, a supranational far-right organization. 